This is the second of two videos exploring some of the changes made to the online assessment engine. In the previous video, we explored the general changes brought about through the assessment management interface overhaul. If you haven't seen that video, be sure to give it a watch if you're feeling a bit lost, as this video will be focused entirely on the new marking interface. Without further ado, let's just jump into it. I'll briefly touch over some of the new ways you can access assessments to mark using the new interface, but note that all pre-existing methods work as standard and will take you to the new marking interface. By selecting my assessment, I can select the marking button next to my instance. Alternatively, inside my instance page, I can choose to search for a particular enrollee and mark only their assessment. Alternatively, if I just want to mark the entire instance, I can just go up to the top right and use this mark button here. Let's have a look at the new marking interface. The first thing you'll likely be presented with is the overview page. As you might expect, this provides you with an overview at a glance in respect to your enrollee's progress. You'll be presented with some handy statistics such as the average learner's score so far, the satisfactory score, as well as average attempts. You'll also have access to a color-coded chart which allows you to visually distinguish the marking progress of your enrollees. This chart, using the corresponding color coding and the tooltips on the right, show me that I have one student who is marked as successful, one student who is marked as unsatisfactory, two students who have yet to be marked, and one student who has yet to submit something. Below this chart, there's a more detailed overview of each student's submission. You can see that it lists their name, their status, the attempts they used, their latest submission, as well as who marked their assessment. If I want to, I can click an enrollee's entry from the list to be taken to their test results. Going further down are some more helpful statistics which might help you to gauge enrollee success. As you can see, the highest performing question was question one, which out of all of my enrollees, 40% have answered correctly. The same applies for the lowest performing question. Keep in mind that all of these fields update as your marking progresses. You can see that at the top left of my screen, my enrollees assessment statuses are automatically grouped into three categories, needs marking, awaiting submission, and marking finalized. These drop-down fields can also be used in combination with the search tool if you wish to filter for a specific enrollee. At the top right of my page, I have access to my usual print assessment buttons, the ability to open this assessment within the new management UI, as well as a button called Begin Marking. As I mentioned before, I still have some students within this assessment who have yet to have been marked. If I want, I can navigate to my Needs Marking drop-down category and select my student manually. I can also utilize the Begin Marking feature at the top right, which will allow me to systematically work through my list of submissions due to be marked. If you have an assessment piece which allows multiple attempts, at the top left, next to your student's name, you have the ability to filter by attempt number. Just below on the left here, you'll be provided with an ongoing summary of the enrollee's score as the marking progresses. Below that is the ability to set an overall result of either unsatisfactory or satisfactory. Going further down is where you have the ability to more thoroughly filter for particular questions throughout your question list, if you have a larger assessment item. You can see that so far, my enrollee already has a score of three out of four. This is because three of my four assessment questions are single choices and are already marked. You can mark your assessment items one by one by selecting either unsatisfactory or satisfactory. Any assessor information specified for a particular question will be displayed here. There are also tabs for feedback, which is student visible, evidence uploads, and internal notes. Keep in mind that all of these features also allow for file uploading by selecting the paperclip icon here. Note that I also have some tabs available at the top of my screen that I can go through. Info provides me with the information related to my assessment item, which if you recall is specified at the initial assessment creation level. I can also sort through attempt feedback, attempt evidence, and attempt notes. 
This is essentially the functionality we just explored, but at a collective glance rather than at an individual question level. You may find it easier to assign feedback, notes or evidence uploads against multiple questions in quick succession from this menu rather than at an individual question level. As my assessment has one item which needs to be manually reviewed and marked, I'm going to scroll to the bottom, select the result, and then select finalize marking at the top right of my page. Heading back to my overview page, you'll see that it's now been updated and my marking finalized section has grown to three. That's about it for our overview of the new marking interface. We do hope you enjoy the changes. If you haven't already, check out the previous video, which takes a general look at some of the assessment management interface changes. Thanks for watching.